to Studio 5. All right, here are some scenarios. Just consider them. See if they fit in your life. I don't know. I'm not making accusations. I won't look at you. You never make it to the gym. You bicker with your kids. Oh. You can't quite finish that forever project. Well, your problem might be pigeons. pigeons? You heard me. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense <laughs> to me either. Studio 5 relationship coach Matt Townsend is here to help us break down the barriers. Yeah. That are holding pigeons. us back. It's pigeons. Blame it all on the pigeons. It's always those stinky, dirty, flying rats. Oh. Now, if you watch Mary Poppins when she sings Feed the Bird, that's quite an emotional okay. moment in the movie. Okay. Have you ever seen a London pigeon? <laughs> no, I haven't. They're nasty. They're nasty. They're dirty. They're gross. So pigeons can be problematic. So there's this article by a woman named Gretchen Rubin, right? And it's called The Happiness Project. And she talks about the fact that our lives are full of, um, what do they call them? Bluebirds of happiness, where we're seeking kind of the Martha Stewart-esque life where everything's perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, Mary Poppins. Mm -hmm. yes. Bluebirds of happiness. But sometimes that we don't have bluebirds. We have pigeons of discontent. We have things in our lives. They're not big things, okay? They're not like pigeons. They're not ostriches of discontent. They're just little things that kind of constantly annoy us that we never seem to get our hands on. We never seem to get control that, of. That's the problem with pigeons. You can't get your hold of your uh -huh. hands. You try to, they fly, no, but they're right. all over. And they leave a mess. Yeah. Have you tried to get your hands on pigeons? Uh, yeah, hello. You've been in the park there. You think, I could just catch that pigeon. You go chase them. You've never chased a pigeon. Oh, you haven't lived. Oh, come okay. on. Okay, Trafalgar Square. We took our family to Trafalgar Square in London, where they have big lions, and our kids were climbing on them. Thousands of pigeons. It was so beautiful. Uh -huh. And one of them pooped. Can I say the, that the on KSL? The kids. One of the kids pooped all over. Oh. No, one of the pigeons pooped on my wife. <laughs> Ruined the moment. <laughs> ruined it. Okay, see, so pigeons, one, you're one poop away from a ruined day. Oh, my word. So, <laughs> we all have them. These little pigeons of discontent are things like just, you know, you walk by the mirror and you just don't, you haven't exercised. And it's just in the back of your head and it just kind of keeps, it just keeps making that noise. Is that an owl or a, I don't know if they coo, <laughs> but you shoo them away and they come back. Yeah. You shoo them away and they come back. Okay, so how do we get rid of these? How do we deal with those annoying things? They're not big, they're just little, Because constant. they mentally do trip you up. They wear you down. Out. They do, I they wear it. you down. I hate them. You eat them. Pigeons are good eating. <laughs> Here's what you do, three rules, okay? First rule, you let pigeons be pigeons. You can keep being mad every day. Hey, why doesn't my pigeon talk like the parrot at the zoo? Well, because it's a pigeon, you freak. Pigeons don't talk. So quit pretending like your pigeons are all have to be good, talking, beautiful little things. They're pigeons, okay? We've all got stuff in our life that we don't necessarily like, and sometimes we just need to allow them to be. Isn't that weird? Here's the irony. Well, we were in Trafalgar Square with a uh, pigeon pooping on my wife. Can I keep saying that? Sure. It just feels wrong. It paints a picture. Uh, making white stuff on my wife. <laughs> All of a sudden, I noticed though we were still being a family, our kids were having a blast. So in the middle of all of these pigeons is some pretty cool miracles, like family, connection, fun, major memories. Every one of my kids remembers Trafalgar Square because there were pigeons there, ironically. We all even remember the poop. And as a family, we all laugh about it now, except my wife. So <laughs> let pigeons be pigeons. In our lives, you're all going to have them. Now, if you can't handle it and you don't want any more pigeons in your life, just these little irritating parts of our life so wait, that we all go we through. just accept. You can just, yeah, we just, just accept it. They are what they are. Let They're not be. affecting my life dramatically. I'm going to mm -hmm. let it go. Uh -huh. and, and do you almost even ignore them? Well, I'd even, I'd embrace them. Sometimes the worst things make you understand the best things. Sometimes understanding that there's dirty pigeons allow bluebirds to live. What if the bluebird was choking on a pop lid, uh, like a Pepsi can, uh, <laughs> bottle lid? Help <laughs> yeah. See, we'll let, the, we'll let the pigeon eat the bottle lid because they're disposable. But there's bad and there's good. So we let pigeons be pigeons. But here's the second rule. Once you've got that, you either have to learn to let them go. If mm -hmm. you can't let them go, then you've got to create change to grow. Okay? If you can't let it grow, then you've got to make some plans to grow out of this issue. Okay? The rule is very simple. If this is what we want out of life and this is what we deliver, that gap is pain. As long as we have pain, we have pain. You've either got to let it go and get rid of the goal of being that size 6 again and be content with being a 12 or, and just be content with it, four kids later and a busy schedule and five different things you're doing, maybe ten's great. Let that idea go or create a plan to get where you want to be, meaning pick up your game and be more of what you want to be. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the pigeon's just going to keep creating problems for you. There's a great book by a guy named Mihai Csikszentmihalyi.
He wrote a book called Flow, Psychology of Optimal Experience. And he talks about the most, the, the most important thing to having optimal life is you must be challenged, and if you are challenged, you must create a plan. If you have a plan to deal with your challenge and you act on it daily, you're gonna start to feel something. So if you have challenges, pigeons, mm -hmm. and you want a change in your life, either manage your expectation, either lower it to something more realistic, or like the sun in the morning that never gets up and he's ornery and he's grumpy and you have to drag him out of bed every day to school, that could be your pigeon of discontent. So you can either let it go and either not care, then don't go to school, or you know, not have so much energy about it, or make a plan. How do I help my 14-year-old son change? Maybe I need to get up earlier. Maybe I need to just psych myself up before I go down and meet him and try to get him out of bed. So this flow guy, Mihai, chick, chick sent Mihai, yeah. you know, here, whatever. That's so, it. We would like the pigeons to disappear. He yeah. actually was saying, pigeons you need good. the pigeons wow. because you have to overcome them. That makes Challenges. you happier. In fact, one you of, won't the, be happier one one of the keys to having optimal life is challenge. If you had no resistance on your life, you wouldn't feel optimal. You need some resistance. You need some, it's called you stress, good stress. Mm -hmm. You need good pressure. I've read this woman, Gretchen Rubin, yeah. who came up with this whole pigeons of discontent thing. I've read her blog here and there, and one of the things I really like about her whole happiness project or the premise thereof is that she talks about planning your happiness. That happiness doesn't just happen. No. And that's kind of what that's I hear you saying. You've got to plan Create it. a plan. And if you have a plan, that's one thing. To deal with your challenge, and even more importantly, is once you have the plan, if you start living it, you'll start to feel happy. Mm -hmm. Even people that are really like terminally ill, and they have not a lot that they can do about it, at least still having something that they can do, some sort of plan, well then I'm gonna live better with it and I'm gonna find a way to make it work and I'm gonna visit my family, then living on that plan creates happiness. Mm -hmm. So happiness is a choice, right? And then the last one is um, find your happiness in your principles, not your perch. See, the neat thing is um, those, those silly little pigeons, they don't get frustrated like you do. And they only have a brain probably the size of a pea. And we have this incredibly intense, powerful brain. One of your next guests will talk about the power of your brain and changing your brain. But if you don't change your brain, you're a pigeon. You're now being run by a pigeon. How on earth do you let a little pea brain bird live your life and make you so frustrated or just some little unimportant event? The key is let your principles start to lead you. One of my favorite quotes is by a guy named Victor Hugo. You ever heard of Vic? Yeah. He wrote a book called The Miserables. I think you've quoted him before. Love this quote. He says, we must be like the bird who halting in its flight on a limb too slight, feels the limb give, the limb give way beneath him, yet sings, knowing that it hath wings. We must be like the bird who's about to land on a limb that can't handle it. And when that limb breaks, the bird doesn't freak out. The bird sings. Why? Because it knows it can fly. Fly. It can make do. If you have the principles of fly, you're going to make it work. If you have no principles, you have to freak out when we, we don't have our weight working for us right. or when our child's not getting out of bed. So the key is find the principles. Principles of love, of sacrifice, of selflessness, of um, hard work, of dedication. Those things create the change. As if you aren't entertaining enough. You've got a date night coming up that's even doubly entertaining, This right? is going to be the best date night in the history of history. This is a big, wow. big deal. Peter Brian Holt is a buddy of mine, and we're doing a Valentine's Day date night where I will take an hour to teach you how to reignite the fire in your marriage. Wow. And Peter will then serenade you for an hour in a concert. And then at the end, we actually bring it all together, and we do something I'm not even going to tell you. Does but it, it is pigeons? It does involve 40 pigeons <laughs> and two doves. Bring your umbrella. But it's totally Totally fun. 801-747-2121 or go to matttownsend.com. It's February 14th and it's filling up, so get there fast. Two of our favorite guys. No better way to spend your date night on Valentine's Day than with Matt and Pete. Love That's it. Right. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Matt.